Yeah. Again, um, we hope that you enjoyed that bus interaction. And 3FM 92.7, they are available across social media. Get the latest from them. And uh, you have uh, that opportunity to also be part of that bus caravan, I have to say, conversation they'll be having every Friday and will be happening live on 3FM and across their streams as well. Well, again, let me encourage you. We have the mega jackpot when it comes to cash out. And so make sure you cash out big. Choose option eight. That's a big thing about it because it's, it's good that you are in a great position to get money credited into your mobile money account. And um, you also will be in a better position. Well, this morning, we're here to talk about, if we can, at least two conversations so far. But our main conversation will be the latest Afrobarometer report. And this is coming on the back of uh, an earlier one, which was on the governance side. And this one, just talking about what the benchmarks are for the respondents or those who were interviewed in that Afrobarometer report. And in, in, in that order, their priorities are unemployment, and then they have infrastructure, health, and the economy also comes in. But if you look at w what has been the good side also for the latest indicators, it looks like Ghanaians want free SHS to be maintained. Over 80% of the respondents said that they want e-levy to be abolished. That's a big thing. And so we'll, we'll go into detail. Why are we having these responses? But you also know that across um, the divide, we've had some interactions on what the outcome of um, that ruling that has been made by the Supreme Court. So let me just uh, introduce Ishak Ibrahim. He currently is a lawyer, but also um, lecturing with the UPSA Law School. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Uh, and Ishak good, Ibrahim. And good morning to your viewers. Great. I see today you're well attired. Are yes. You, are, you, are, you, are you on the campaign trail? Yes, I am. We are in the campaign every day. Oh, okay. And as you can see, the number mm. one, mm. we are not going. To, we are not only going to be number one in the ballot. Okay. But women will surely win the presidency. Okay. And he is going to be number one president. Okay. Yes. Okay. So and then also joining us uh, once again, Michael Safo Kantanka. Good morning to you. Good morning, um, Roland. Good morning. Uh, good it's morning. To, and, th and thank you for uh, joining us as well. Yeah, okay, right. Movement for Pleasure, Change. Yeah. I, uh, what is Abilolo? Is that your nick Nikki? Yeah, that's my name. Okay, what does it mean? It's, it's the name of Abilone. A rendition Abilone. of the Nigerian Abilele. So, so this is my Ghanaian version. I see. When, you, yeah. when did you take the, this, this name? It's secondary school? Secondary school. Secondary definitely. School. All right. Laura Kwame Jantwa is also here, also in yellow. Um, uh, movement for Change. Good morning to you. Ghana will rise again. Mind yourself. Uh, Roland. Yes, sir. What yeah, yeah, does yeah. that mean in English? Um, some, I have a worry. Bibichi some, Imagine. Something is worrying. Ishak just said something. Hey. And I'm wondering. Too early. I'm too early. <laughs> uh, let, me, okay. let me get it in. Okay. 2016, mm. 2015. Mm. What did President Kufuado say? Give me the chance. Vote for me. Give me the chance. Vote for me. Was... Vice President Baumia part of that team. Did he say some? And if he did, where are we today? Mm. <laughs> Is he not repeating the same thing? Yeah, that give me the chance. Give me the chance. Give me yeah. the chance. It's not the same thing. Well, the argument is that they are not the they are, the two are not the same. Two individuals. <laughs> Has it got to do with individuals? It's got to do with teamwork. <laughs> Sometimes a leader yeah. is very important. Uh, number two, uh -huh. number two. Let me ask another question. Mm. If it so happens that Ishak's wish comes true, tell me, the fifty-eight million big hole is that a cause of financial loss? Because we haven't seen the end result. The national cathedral. Yes. Is it a cause of financial loss? If he comes, would he be able to prosecute those who? Because. The National Cathedral was not in their manifesto. It wasn't a government thing. It was somebody's wish. And 58 million has been sunk in. Would they be able, will he be able to prosecute at least two gentlemen? Yes, one <clears throat> after three years, but one currently, a former finance minister. And will he be able to cite his boss for causing financial loss? Number three, the other thing which is quite material for me, all these manifestos that we are talking about, have they costed it? What is the cost 
of the promises being made by the MPP? What's the cost of the promises being made by the NDC? I think CDD has done some work. Yeah, but when you look at the numbers... You're talking about 13 billion, 13 billion for, for, for the MPP, MPP and then 18 billion. 18 billion mm. for the NDC. Mm. In this time of financial crisis, where is the money going to come from? I don't understand. You are saying that we should go no, I'm not austere? Saying, I'm not saying we should go austere. We are in crisis. We are, we, are, we are trying to get 3 billion from where? IMF. Where are we going to get 13 billion from? Where are we going to get 18 billion from? We should rather look at cutting back and look at those, those projects that are germane to push us forward. Instead of bringing new promises, not knowing how we are going to finance it, and then manifestos become a what? A wish list. And then you find that when they now come in, they deviate from the manifesto and do other things. Mm. At least, be truthful to us. Anyway, the first manifesto was the Great Transformational Plan. So, I, I don't know yeah, if you say that. Yeah, no, it's not a question. Um, <laughs> Abraham Maliba, good morning to you, and thank you for joining us. How are you? Good morning. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm told a court has ruled that your Memphis Central candidate will not be on the ballot sheet. Yes. Or what's, what, what's the thing? Or is still like, you're going through judicial... Well, process. there was supposed to be an injunction application moved yesterday. And uh, I think the High Court, um, as it were, decided that uh, it was not going to grant that application. So as it is now, uh, she will not be on the ballot. Uh, that is what it means now. Okay. All right, but we also know that uh, the Supreme Court had made uh, a ruling subsequently. But let's have an insert so that I just uh, allow them to have some four minutes of each, and then we can go to the substantive. We have considered the application and find that the grounds supporting the application have no merit because of the very explicit and clear directions of the 1992 Constitution, specifically Article 2, Article 130 and Article 296 and established decisions of the Supreme Court from decades of the country's constitutional history. Mm, Anishak, what did you make of this? And then also, um, now that this is the position of the court, which yeah. becomes final, it yeah. means that the speaker would have to adhere to this. Thank you. Um, I think today is my second day in discussing this issue in this studio. Uh, not after the ruling. No, not there after was, the ruling. Was, I, no we ruling discuss it. I think I specifically mentioned Article 2 here. You did? Yes, I did. And I did mention that it's very unfortunate, but I must say that this Speaker of Parliament is the most lawless Speaker of Parliament I have ever seen. You see, the Ghana Constitution is operating under the supremacy of the Constitution. It's not the supremacy of Parliament. But even if it was where there's a supremacy of Parliament, we are not talking about decisions of the Speaker. In the Westminster Parliament, when they say supremacy of Parliament, it means the Queen in Parliament. If you look at A.V. Dicey lectures, it is a parliamentary decision voted by both houses, I mean both sides. And when that decision is reached, then the Queen will just sign it. Then it becomes what we call a decision of Parliament. It's not just a mere decision of the, of the Speaker, of the Westminster Parliament. But our constitution is different. It's the supremacy of the constitution. And what it simple means is that all organs of government, the true organs of government, they draw their powers from the constitution. And you have to stay within your power. And if you, as the Chief Justice said, Article 2 is very clear. If there's any disputes as to whether you have stayed within your power or not, Anybody at all can go to the, 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 the Supreme Court. The Constitution made it clear. You can go to the Supreme Court under Article 130 for the enforcement and, inter and the interpretation of the con a provision in the Constitution. And as is rightly said, under Special, uh, special Tribunal Ex Parte Acosta, if there are two rival meaning placed on any provision, then the Supreme Court will then cease with the matter to do it. The Speaker of Parliament, as we said, have taken the powers of the High Court under Article 99, as well as taking powers of the Supreme Court for interpretation. So it was right for Afonio Markin to go to court for interpretation 
and enforcement of the constitution. In the meantime, if we want to wait till the interpretation and the enforcement come, so much harm would have been caused. So there is a need, therefore, to stop implementation of that, uh, this and that, that decision that the speaker made. And the constitution said, under Article 2, if you go there, the Supreme Court made decision. At least, here they are not saying, they, are, they have not dealt with the substantive matter. But they said, stop. Yes. Preserve the status quo. And as people might be aware, I think this law is drawn from what we call the American Cinema case. I hope we all familiar with it as lawyers. The American Cinema case, I think it was decided 1973. As to when can they grant an injunction or stay of execution. And it's very clear. It's a low bar. They are not deciding that substantive okay. matter. So, so, so the, the reason for the question, and you yes. have to just use a, a minute. Now, okay. uh, we're, we're, now we will need Parliament to reconvene us quickly. Because, yes. And if you remember, the Chief yes. Justice even made a point, even though yes. uh, it was not related to the subject at the time. At the time. That the Parliament is not sitting. There's a constitutional crisis yes. and all that. So Parliament how, how do you sitting. think we need to go about so it? So Article 2 made it clear. If an order is made by the Supreme Court, you need to implement that particular order. And the Supreme Court is very clear. The status quo might preserve. You need to continue to do as it. As quickly as The well. Speaker should have uh, co the call Parliament immediately. You don't need a quorum to make that decision. You have to implement the decision straight away. So by this time, we should have been having the MPs record. Yes, it should, it should have. Uh, Mr. Maliba, what, what, what observation also do you make, especially from the proceedings of the court, the ruling subsequently, and the actions that should have been taken by the Speaker thereof? So, the Speaker is talking about Article 2. Now, at the time that the, speaker, the, 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 Chief, the Chief Justice, Justice mm -hmm. is speaking about Article 2, I'm submitting that at the time the Supreme Court, no, at the time the writ was filed in the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction to hear this matter. Again, at the time the writ was filed at the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction. And if you have no jurisdiction from the beginning, you can't have jurisdiction in the middle of the case. Now, read Article 2, 1. Read Article 2, 1 for it. Uh, Article 2, 1. A mm. person who alleges, A, an enactment or anything contained in or done under the authority of that or any other enactment or any act or omission of any person is inconsistent with or is in contravention of a provision of this constitution may bring an action in the Supreme Court for a declaration to that effect. So at the time Afenio Markin filed his suit, what did the speaker do? Did he do anything? Are you getting it? Did the speaker do anything? So if your foundation is weak, your superstructure cannot be strong. You think, you think um, the Supreme Court didn't... They got it, it wrong. Them. Look, the fact that the Supreme Court speaks doesn't mean that the Supreme Court is right. It's just that the Supreme Court is the last court. And I have always said that. But for FIFA and CAF, don't you think that our government and the sports ministry have said that our sports students were up to standard? The two issues are not coterminous. They are coterminous because if we had a superior international body, they would have been striking down what the Supreme Court does. Are you now, are you now understanding me? I get because you. our internal activities in our courts are not subject to a superior international body, they get away with some of these things. So I have submitted again that the Supreme Court didn't have jurisdiction at the time so you're that saying, the rate was filed. So you're saying that if it was so back if, in the day where we had the Privy Council, would have petitioned the Privy Council? Yes. To strike what the Supreme Court has done. Now, if the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction, and went ahead to do what it did. Must the speaker... Which was? Which is to injunct uh, the, the, the man. Must the speaker obey it? Some say yes, he should obey it. But he then went back to court to have it set aside. The Supreme Court refused. 
and you they were going to refuse because what, what you are actually telling them was that they are not competent you, you, the effect of setting aside what they did was to tell them that you are not competent and who agreed to that which father will agree for his son to say papa you are not competent so the effect of speakers application was to tell the Supreme Court that you are you are wrong you are incompetent you don't know the law they will protect themselves so it's not as if because they rule they did the right thing next point next point so if the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction beginning it can have jurisdiction at the middle of the case that's my submission the next one is article 90 now if both the Supreme Court and the High Court have concurrent jurisdiction where do you go first? Must you just go to the Supreme Court? Yabua versus J.H. Mensah. The Supreme Court made this point very clear. Article 99. You go to the lower court before you can come to the high court. Because in, in Yabua versus uh, J.B. Dankwa, eh, I say J.B. Dankwa, Yabua versus J.H. Mensah, the fact was that the J.H. Mensah, who was a member of parliament, I don't know whether Sunyai East or West, one of them, a resident said that J.H. Mensah was not residing in the constituency that he's representing. And that he rather come from, or he, he, he resides in the other one. I don't know whether which one, the East or West. I don't, can you tell me? Sunyani East. Sunyani East, exactly. So the resident said that he was from Sunyani West. And not Sunyani East. And the Supreme Court made this statement dealing with Article 99 that you go to the lower court first. And that's what Jesse Atuba was saying that it is the high court that has jurisdiction. Now, then you add Article 115. The last time I made that point here clear, Article 115, where it says that. A person who sits or votes in parliament, knowing or having reasonable grounds for knowing that is not entitled to do so, to do so. I read article 115. Oh, yeah, yeah, 115. Okay, okay, sorry. I'm not reading article 115. Okay. So it says, um, there shall be freedom of speech. Okay, yeah. Debate and proceedings uh -huh. in parliament. We looked at that last week. Last week. And I said we, did, we dealt with it here last week. What has that got to do with it? The point is that the Supreme Court could have... Because for, from what the lawyers are saying, uh, the, once the Supreme Court is dealing with this, it, it surmounts or overshadows whatever it is. Because no, it has the... I am saying that the, the intrusion, the Supreme Court's intrusion into Parliament... But, like, Amale, but the Supreme Court has the right. No, no. Because this is let a very contentious you, Let matter. me tell you something. And I'll get to the point where you will be talking about... How do we deal with this matter? This book, and I was surprised that the Chief Justice was saying that in the application to recuse, to recuse, to recuse, to, for the judge to recuse himself. Justice go. The, Supreme, the, uh, uh, the Chief Justice said that it's a constitutional matter and not a political matter. Every lawyer knows that this constitution is both a legal and a political document. This, this, this document is both a legal and a political document. And who doesn't know that? And who doesn't know that? The matter we are dealing with is to benefit either the NDC or the MPP in Parliament. Who doesn't know that? Are you saying that the Supreme Court should have uh, taken that into consideration? And ask the man to recuse himself. Irrespective of the substantive matter that was before it. The substantive matter, he must also recuse himself. This one, and there's a substantive matter. So, let me tell you. The solution is not in what we are doing in, 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 in court. And let the court stay its hands off. This, this document, I've told you, is both legal and political. There are some issues emanating from this constitution which you can use legal means to deal with. There are some matters emanating from this constitution which you can use a political means to deal with. This particular one can be dealt with by political means. And yesterday, you saw the uh, uh, Council of Elders. Was the it Council of State. It? Council of State. You saw the Council of Eight. Meeting with the speaker, you heard uh, Chairman Saboso saying that if he were, he didn't say he were. He said, "What was the norm? What was the norm? Was that so the, the he, leaders no, no. would have resolved this exactly in chambers exactly before it comes to the plenary? Does that buttress my point of 
using political means to deal with this matter? Are you saying that the Supreme Court should have taken note of that? Note of that. There are some matters when they happen, Parliament has the capacity within itself to deal with it. Now, we, we've gone to court. The court has ruled against Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, too, adjourned the matter, silly die or silly day. Some say silly die, some say silly day. Depending on which country. Which country you come from. Is that a silly die or silly day? Well, and and then the, 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 what it means is that indefinitely. <laughs> now, Speaker 2 is within his right, as it were, to adjourn silly day. Hmm. Now, but this order um, means that no, 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 it no. has overriding consideration. You, you don't understand. No, okay. But me, I'm not. You understand. I'm, I'm, not I'm saying that the court has spoken. Mr. Speaker 2 okay. has adjourned and he has spoken. What he has also done is within the law. Hmm. Hey, you people. You understand? Now, let's assume that we're going to lose a legal, legal, legal uh, uh, Means. platform mm. to deal with the matter. When Speaker returns oh. mm -hmm. and calls Parliament, mm. the NDC too mm. walks away. Speaker says that I don't have the numbers to take the issues. Are you? Are you? No, I'm telling you that. I'm telling you why we cannot use legal means. Because, I know they, are, because they are human beings the, involved who the, have to take exactly. political decisions. Just as how you, you couldn't use the court to deal with the yard now, the bomb matter, and to we deal with it culturally and traditionally. I'm saying that the court should Even stay away. Even the issue, there's a court, substantive legal issue. Even in Baku, there's but a the court. human so beings themselves. The court, I want to say is that, and then everybody hear this. The court can make pronouncement, but would the human beings agree to it? Mm. And I've given examples. Now, if the 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 Supreme Court, uh, Mr. Speaker, calls Parliament back and NDC walks out, which is also legitimate. Are you saying the NDC walk I out? I am asking you, I'm telling you. Didn't the MPP walk out? And when the MPP walk out, there was addition, were we able to take addition? No. That's why the <laughs> adjournment took place. NDC too walks out. The MPP alone cannot do anything. So, the point is this. Let us use the political a uh, uh, solution mm. to deal with this matter and leave the legal solution mm. the legal solution will not deal with this matter effectively okay um, and then uh, mr kantaka it's good that you and i are not lawyers at the end of the day in my uh, res or irrespectful considered view so to speak if i can say that you know <clears throat> what does it mean because you were a member of the mpp before you joined alan so I'm thinking that in their in their constitution, of course, the national constitution overrides uh, is a supreme is a supreme uh, law. So, I'm thinking. So, what happens? They'll go to Congress uh, or conference, and then they will amend it in in three years That's or two years. Yes. Well, thank you. Um, I think there was some form of a crisis because of. Because I'm asking the, this based on what the objective finally is when the Supreme Court does uh, that. I want, to believe, I want to believe if really they want to push through this mischievous position, that's the MPP, then eventually they would have to review their constitution, the party constitution. Why do you call this mischievous? Well, I call it mischievous because it worked for them previously. It worked in the Michael K., um, the second deputy speaker's case. And in this case, when it renders them disadvantaged they go to the supreme court for interpretation but mind you um so yesterday the honorable alan Chamartin issued um, a presser on this and i'm just going to speak in light of what he said so essentially what he's saying is the supreme uh, the the, um, the parliamentary leaders were right for going to the supreme court for interpretation i mean it is no doubt that the Supreme Court exists to interpret issues. But then, did the said articles in question, the, um, the one that says if you move from your, your party to another or to an independent party, you are going to um, lose your seat in Parliament, does it call for interpretation so as to call for the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to come and interpret? I think that's not the case we are faced here. It's a very straightforward issue. And even with all the legal gymnastics going on, we can see through 
that there's a mischievous position by the the MPP side of Parliament, and then there's the NDC. I think so far the main um, the what do we call him? The Speaker of Parliament has conducted himself so well, so well. You I think mean, so? Yeah, I think so. And. I would expect them to... Not in the considered view of the Supreme Court, or based on the pronouncement that has been well, made in this order. Well, like lawyer Maleba said, it's the Supreme Court. So, you know, they have finality in some of these instances. But the fact of the matter is, the finality cannot always be the right thing. <laughs> you know, the fact that they have the last say doesn't mean they are right in saying whatever they have to say. And so, I would expect the same speaker to go back to the supreme court use the same you know we have to respect the rule of law we've adopted use the same court to try and get them to review their um, decision if really it must be done otherwise then we have to move forward and expect the mpp to review their constitution to mm. to reflect what they are fighting for now well, certainly exactly well, well, but, but that also will be arrived at when we get the final, final determination, determination in so, so but when i was listening to the Lai ruling Jantua. oh Jantua, the ruling of the court and of course um we had the uh, cj as the lead i was thinking and it looks like some of our viewers too seem to be of same mind so for example alaji now says roland so please ask Lawyer Ishak, for example, that if Apenyo Markins uh, had decided to contest as NDC MP currently, not cross capital, because if you if you look at if you look at the main objective, the argument is that the member of parliament should stay in the current parliament because he was voted for the current term so very good please take your constitution so <laughs> let's say let's not use a penny marking let's say the for former now mp after having gone independent decided that he wanted to contest as cpp or ndc in formena knowing that he has a base to win so it means that he'll be contesting as ndc mp and be second deputy speaker for the term and will be allowed so let's say that happens in the early part in the early part of the term let's say by the third year because within uh, the, the, we are first year second year third year and fourth year by the second year the, the officers would have been known and people's positions would have been known and he decides that he wants to contest as an MP in the next election, whilst in this parliament he's representing himself as an independent candidate. So what, what, what will be done then? Will he be allowed for the next two years or the next one year to be sitting in the house? Whilst he represents either MPP or NDC. You see the confusion? No, there's no confusion here because the Supreme Court seems to be... I could be wrong, according this to the Supreme Court's uh, dictate. But I feel, hmm, when I go to 97, a member of parliament shall vacate. Shall vacate. The shall is mandatory. And then when you go to H, on the face of it, it says, if he was elected a member of parliament as an independent the former mp was elected as a member of parliament as an independent right true or false true then he goes on to say independent and joins a political party uh, are you saying a member the constitution should have read and will join mm -mm 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 -mm. i'm not saying that i'm taking it from the mandatory part of 97 it says shall vacate and i'm trying to find out when you look at the context of each hmm, it says if he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate the former mp he was elected as a member of parliament as an independent candidate no be so 
and joins a political party. Has he not joined the political party? Right or wrong? What does the constitution say? Shall vacate. So for me, it's clear. Yeah. For me, it's clear. I don't see any other interpretation well, I, 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 to I, I, this. The question is whether it should vacate now or for the next one. Now. How do you know he's going to win the next one? Is he God? <laughs> Will he be able to tell? It's an MPP stronghold. Eh? So let's go. Let's wait. Let's go to the MPP constitution. What does it say about people who, uh, what do you call it? Uh, no, but they have followed what is in the constitution to do their own. Yeah. It is absolute. You are out. So what's the difference? Let me ask a question. The speaker, in giving his information, cited certain things that he used. I expected the Supreme Court uh, to clarify Honorable Michael Quay's situation, uh, where they said the MPP brought a petition indicating that the former MP was no more in the party. Huh? And so, what happened? Did he not stand as independent? Was he not taken out? True or false? Number two, I expected the Supreme Court to clarify Ajwa Safu's situation. Mm. But this is not the, the... They are not looking at the... This is just for the order. Those were mm. not before them. Mm. They were, it was not before them, but mm. it would have helped, wouldn't it? To While strike, the position to strike it out. You see, you see, you see, the, when the Supreme Court sits, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, the Supreme Court sits not only to interpret the law, but the Supreme Court also sits because of public interest. And that public interest eh, has got to do with some of these things. Clarify it for us. Was the speaker right in indicating that Adjoa Safo, she had absented herself from parliament beyond 15 days? Could he declare her seat vacant or not? Clarify it for us so that we all understand that the speaker couldn't have done that. It is not in the speaker's remit whatsoever to declare a vacant position. But you know that parliament can interpret you know courts can interpret you know that even the council of state can interpret but the supreme court has the overall power to interpret where <sighs> there is a dispute in the law well, we'll right we'll, right we'll get that on the, that's true. right or that's wrong? True. You're, you're right you're now right. i feel hmm, and I, I respect the CJ very well. Though. I respect that. But I feel the CJ exposed herself. How do you mean? Wait, let me finish. The CJ exposed herself in her interaction with Sorry, where she bleated out, what is this country where parliament even isn't sitting? Mm. Is Why not? She's a CJ. Not, not there. You don't express your opinion in that environment even if, in the, if that is what you think because the see the par parliament is a law upon itself so you stayed the action what happened huh? the speaker also wanted to show you that me do i have power in my house i have power in my house i'll suspend parliament indefinitely you cannot do anything about it. You cannot tell me to get parliament back up because it is my power. I am in my jurisdiction. Okay. For me, eh, I think for, for situations like this, we should try as much as possible to form consensus. Mm. And I think... That responsibility can lie with the Supreme Court in as much as th they have the power mm, to interpret. 
that interpretation should lead to a consensus issue and not lead to strife. Right. Maybe based on what the Supreme Court said, the Speaker has now indicated that Parliament will be called in when? Early November this month. Now, there is still a situation that needs to be sorted out because I don't think the NDC are going to move away from this majority minority thing. No, it has to they be. Should. It has to be based on what well, the Supreme Court. Well, said. let's see. Let's see. Let's see if it will. Okay. When, 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 when the last time they went was it not there? Afenyo Makin decided to walk out so that there is no confrontation between the two, which I feel was a good act he made. Okay in terms of at least working out because he did indicate that ndc they are friends we are brothers we are this so are you saying no that the ndc too can also deliberately decide that we disagree with the position and as a result of that Why they, 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 they? they will indirectly decide not to can they and as amaliba rightly said it is a political issue all these things going on has got so they'll just come and then they walk tied, out. is tied into politics all right and we've got to be able and I'm glad that the Council of State have met the Speaker. Mm. If for nothing at all, mm, we've got to get to a point. And look, this whole thing, really and truly, in as much as there is some ambience on the NDC side for bringing it up, there was no way, if these MPs were thrown out of Parliament, there was no way that we could have a by-election considering the time but you see the other side of the coin is that there were others who were denied presentation representation in parliament for a whole term absolutely nothing was said about it is that right is that wrong and these are some of the things for me i think the supreme court should be able to clarify okay. hey mr k you were wrong in making that decision. Mr. S, you were wrong in making that decision. Mr. Y, yes, what you did was right. So that it clears. Okay. All right, Shaq, uh, yeah. this one was just uh, an introductory comment. So um, we, we know substantively the latest Afrobarometer report is indicating that 82% of Ghanaians believe the country is on the right direct, uh, is on the wrong, uh, wrong path. Yeah. But we also have over 80 percent, that will be 83, saying that they love uh, policy like free SHS, and so they would want it to be maintained. Um, over 80 again say that they want uh, the e-levy go gone yeah. with, with also the realization that when you take a look at what the considered view of Ghanaians are, of course, they are the respondents, a small number, uh, but yeah. then used to generalize all of us. The priorities are unemployment, infrastructure, health, the economy. Yeah. How do we deal with these vex matters? Thank you very much. Um, I'm glad of this question, but before that, I just want to uh, respond very quickly to a few things. I believe we do always create the wrong impression. Uh, my good friend here said Article 99 gives concurrent jurisdiction to both the Supreme Court and the High Court, and, and the Supreme Court have assumed jurisdiction. That's not correct. Look at Article 99. It's very clear only the High Court has jurisdiction. I think your marking went to the Supreme Court not based on Article 99. Article 130. One three zero he say, he is one way. They, they should have they taken considered gave, view of because ninety nine, so that they, that they gave concurrent jurisdiction. He even went as far as using Gage Mensa going, and they say no. If the Supreme Court has a concurrent jurisdiction with the High Court, you go to the lower court first. But that's not what happens here. The Afonio Martin went to court. He made it very clear under Article One Three Zero for the enforcement and interpretation of the constitution. Let's get that right. Otherwise, we'll be... One, yes, 130 for the enforcement and the interpretation of the constitution. Enforcement because the, the, the Speaker of Parliament have taken powers under Article 99 from the High Court. So he's not going because of Article 99. He's going to enforce Article 130 to enforce the constitution. So that's, that's how we need to get it clear. 
So it's going to mislead Ghanaians. Another one is that the Supreme Court is not making the order to interfere with proceedings of Parliament. The order is made to enforce the Constitution. And they have that power to do that under Article 2. So that's how we need to clarify it. When we do that, we confuse Ghanaians. And then they hear from this lawyer, they hear from that lawyer. I think when it comes to constitutional law, please, we should try as much as possible to really get the expert who will help more than the rest of us who are politicians, who have self-interest can then come. Otherwise, we are just polluting the whole atmosphere. People who are non-lawyer, they get confused. So having clarified that side, that side needs to be clear. It doesn't concern Jake Mercer's case at all. Article 99 give a complete Because you side with one. the Supreme Court. Yes. Because you side with the Supreme Court. Please go ahead. Okay. So, uh, having come to you, you said afro barometer report you've mentioned. I think the first thing you mentioned is that they said the country was going towards uh, the wrong direction. Over 80%, yes. And then, majority approve uh, what they call free it, the free SHS. I think there was a third one you mentioned. Well, the one Ilevi. The Ilevi are abolished. They, yes. They, they, um, they, are, they are pressing needs. Okay. Uh, uh, I will uh, address the, okay. I will address the last two later. But as the country is going through the wrong direction, I can understand what they mean, but it can be explained within context. You know, when the COVID 19 hit the whole world, everywhere there was a struggle. And the president made serious. Are you also back with COVID nineteen? I thought you. Let were me different. come. No, 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 no. We have to always explain things in a context. The Afro barometer is saying because of difficulties, it's why some Ghanaians said it's running through the wrong direction. Is that not it? But if you can explain the causes of the difficulty, it can give some explanation. You might accept it or not, but majority, I believe, will accept it. If you compare it to the last administration, you can understand the context. And you also have to make a comparative analysis. Ghana is not an island on its own. It lives within the international community. Now, when COVID-19 hit, the president gave a very important speech. And I believe it was an important speech. And almost every head of state was trying to say, which, which way can we, can we, I mean, what are the strategies to make sure that people do not die within our jurisdictions. The president said, we know how to bring economies back to life, but we do not know how to bring human beings to life. So what he was telling us is that I was going to prioritize human life over the economy because that is our prime, uh, what they call it, uh, objective to do under these circumstances. Some country prioritize the economy over human rights. A good example is Britain. I believe they prioritize Economy of a human life. See the number of deaths that occurred in Britain, Italy, Brazil, United States. So I believe the priority was there. So his speech well, tells us that I, I think that we are when likely you, when to you have read, when you read the yes, reports of yes. the United uh, of the United Nations Agency, that okay. the WHO. Okay. It's very clear in there okay. that many countries in most temperate regions. Yes. Uh, most tropical regions yes. did not suffer deaths okay. because either because of temperature reasons yes. or also because at the time that COVID happened and yes. there was embargo across yes. the world, yes. movement of people also was isolated. And you uh, and, and they and they also make yes. the considered view yes. that why the disease indeed spread yes. was that transportation when it comes to you, air you are transport, explaining reasons for mortality. My reason Listen, wasn't there. Uh, but you, you, I was talking you just about, make I was a deduction about and related to mortality. No, I was no, I wasn't talking about mortality. about deaths and economy. No, reasons for mortality. Are you saying Brazil and Canada, then the Canada, other Canada. European countries reasons, they suffer the deaths because no, they, they do in Britain? I was in the COVID era. I was in Britain throughout about for about five months. The airports were open. If you go through Heathrow Airport, Gatwick Airport, there was no initially there was no controls. Just as Ghana did immediately, Britain ask anybody. The airport was open. A lot of people brought COVID in. But that's not, I wasn't talking about mortality. I was talking about priorities. The president said he was going to prioritize human life over uh, what they call it, uh, the economy. But as to whether the priority led to low death, I'm not talking about that. But what I said is that COVID-19 rightly led to global cost of living crisis. And as I said, Ghana is not in isolation. Either country, just as we have difficulties, the advanced countries such as Britain have cost of living crisis. So I can understand it. But if you compare it to the last administration, that's why we have these problems. 
We still did better than the last administration that Domama led. Domama led when he had taken out to the IMF. The, 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 the inflation rate was about 14%. And when we came to power, the MPP immediately brought it down to 7%. It was 7% before COVID-19 uh, hit us. So you check it. But what I'm saying is that I'm not denying that there are difficulties. No. But what I'm saying is that our difficulties can be explained. And right now we are beginning to get good news. Because, as you said, Moody and other credit rating agencies have given us some good ratings that the economy is beginning to, to pick up. So I'm going to just urge Ghanaian, let's be patient. We'll soon have good news. The economy is the economy to grow. picking up uh, when you have restructured your debts. You've, you've prioritized the payment of, of your are creditors for first, later. Are we the first government to restructure the economy? When the, I, I went, during the 1998, 2000, I was it? E levy was introduced as part of IMF policy. L the NDC introduced E levy. L Lawyer, Isha, they please, brought in cost sharing. Please, please don't don't introduce uh, uh -huh. some foreign issues to this. This no, is the first no, time. This issue. is the first time in the history yes. of Ghana yes. that we have any government yes. leading the front, yes. not able to pay its creditors. Yes. This is the first time, and and, and not, not me, not me saying that the, the Britain Wood institutions, yes. their relations yes. with and all the analysts. Yes. This is the first time. And this is historical what I'm information. What I'm trying to say is that every government, when you face difficulties, Ghana is not the first country to face difficulties. Around the world, the IMF is there for countries that face difficulties. We've got the Zimbabwe almost collapsing. Argentina is similar situation. The advanced country struggles. When you struggle, you meet the IMF, and they'll probably give you some conditionalities. Sometimes you need to cut. What I'm saying is that, yes, I agree as part of the MPP strategy was to do debt restructuring. But what I'm saying is that we are not the first, uh, what they call it, uh, political part, uh, government to do debt restructuring. Others do it. The NDC did it differently. Just how we brought e levy. They brought what, in. What did the NDC do by way of the debt restructuring for, the 19, for, 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 for for ordinary citizens? 1998-99. You know what they, they did? What, what they, did they introduced, they uh, what did they call it, uh, um, uh, what they call it? But uh, debt restructuring. Uh, taxes. Right. No, it was a part of debt structuring. No. They introduced cost sharing. No, if if you are I saying that, kid, I'm telling you, I was in the. No, no, sir, I, I I'm not. I'm, I'm so not. I know I'm, you. I'm not challenging they your competence. They introduced cost sharing. I'm not challenging the your competence. Your knowledge level and experience. Students. Please okay. let's, let's 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 put the other matters okay. into perspective. Yes. What I'm saying is that historically, yes. this is the first time a government yes. has restructured debts. Creditors domestically. Yeah have not been be, been able to be paid and this is the first time oh, you do you accept Ghanaian that government or a government domestic debt do okay. you understand yeah that? i i accept there was a debt structure i'm not denying that but what i'm saying is that it was because of the exigencies that we face government has to make the changes so it's not because of that and but the what, you are introduced but what i'm trying to tell you is that elsewhere when they face difficulties they did certain policies which were very unpopular then and one of them was uh, cost sharing. One of them was privatization. Even the Ghana Commercial Bank and other people made those decisions. Okay. But what I'm just saying so is like that I can shock. understand. Um, Coming from Russia, Ukraine is also accounting for the CD being 17 um, Ghana cities for a dollar. Well, if you are facing economic difficulties, likely it will affect your foreign exchange. So I don't deny it. But let me move to the other things and I address them. I have a free HHS. I agree with my very good friend here. He made some observation in one of our debates elsewhere that when it comes to education, the, the, I, I agree with him. When it comes to the education, there's no government in Ghana I, that will match. I, I didn't say that. Okay, you said we have I done phenomenal stay, good job. Stay. STEM schools. Okay, stay. okay. So these are my this words. Have two minutes to wrap yes. up on. When it comes to education, we, it is unmatched. In terms of producing infrastructure, especially the STEM schools. The first time in my area there's a STEM school at the Kwasika Secondary School. If you go and look at it, in Burkina Faso, that will be a, a university. That will be a first class university. Everybody, I invite people to go and have a look at it. I don't understand. Are you are you maligning Burkina Faso? No, I am not maligning. But what I'm saying is that economically we are Faso. doing that what better you're saying? than them. No, I'm talking about the infrastructure. The kind of infrastructure they built from scratch. There was no school over there. They built it from scratch. It was number one. So as for education, it doesn't surprise me that the NDC are now coming to own it. 
something they have always objected to and criticized. I'm now I'm not surprised that because of his success, they have jumped from criticizing it to owning it. Apparently, they introduced it first. But Ghanaians are not idiots. We might say things, but the listeners have intelligence. They know who such a free is just first. It is one of the reasons that I believe the MPP government is going to be rewarded come 7 December. That will make Dr. Bagumia the president. The last one was which one? Let me just address it quickly. One minute. What, what was the last point? Okay, so the that, e levy. Yes. It's very clear. When the flag bearer of the MPP had the opportunity to meet the press at the UPSA, it was one of the very important points he made. That when he comes to power, he's going to abolish it. And so it's very clear. So what Ghanaians really wants is what the flag bearer is promising he will give to them. He said he is going to abolish mm -hmm. it. And it is one of his strategies. You, you look surprised. What's the surprise? Oh, me? Yes. No, no, I don't. You, you don't. So that's good. I so don't. the Ghanaians want he levy to be abolished. The flag bearer of the MDP say when he comes to power, he is going to abolish it. Mm -hmm. And let nobody pretend it's a policy stolen from the, the NDC. That's what they claimed. So the e levy will be abolished. And I think it's in the right direction. Well, um, so you... you, you um, the Supreme Court... I just want to deal with a second. Uh, we don't have the No, I know. The Supreme Court. Because you took is a lot of Supreme, time in the first. Is the Supreme Court not called upon to determine whether those seats are vacant or not? That's a substantive matter. They haven't dealt with it yet. So the interim one oh, is why? Stop, stop, with. stop, 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 I wasn't happy when you were talking. So keep your mouth shut. The Supreme Court is called upon to determine whether the seats are vacant. So if the Supreme Court is Call upon to do that is that not an article 99 matter stop it now you see is that not article 99 matter no nope. oh no sure look <laughs> listen to me he disagrees i mean he, he's entitled listen to me mm -hmm. listen to me how many percent of Ghanaians say they think that this country is headed in the wrong direction uh, no, 80 80 80 yeah 80 80 80 80. 82. 82. Mm. This figure should have been 90 percent. You don't determine that. Ghanaians do. I am. I know. Your voice pop from uh, Johnny. Just this morning. In the car. Yes. Yeah. In the car. In the, in the car. Mm. In the bus. In the bus. You just this morning. Ordinary Ghanaians. Yes. Ordinary Ghanaians who ply Medina to Accra. That's the ordinary Ghanaian. Some two come from uh, Labadi to or some Accra. from Somania. They Soma continue. Come, huh? What were they saying? Then now you sit here and you look in the face of Ghanaians and throw mad at them and say that it is because of ill living. Uh, oh. It is because of uh, 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 COVID. How is that spiting them or throwing mad? COVID brought huge sums of money to this government. Tell me that I'm lying. World Bank. IMF, even they broke into the Bank of Ghana vault that they want to deal with COVID. Huh? Tell me what did they do with that money? Is that not that money they shared like granite to their pieces? Why? Under COVID, didn't our revenue go up? We had our we revenues went up. We exceeded. We exceeded. Uh, yes. By, and the, and by, the, it was a revised target. It, it doesn't matter. Target is target. It, uh, we exceeded it. Isn't it? Isn't it? We, we even had surplus in trade to be. To be true. Good. So, what is he talking about? COVID is what it is. Is it COVID that told them that they should, they should take people's pension monies, old ladies' pension monies, and to the extent that the former Chief Justice had to go and, 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 and uh, demonstrate. demonstrate? Was it COVID? That told them to do that. They have no remedy for this country. These people have come to their waste points. The continuation of this administration is a clear indication that we are going to continue to suffer. I said it here last week. You want to continue the MPP? Then you want to continue suffering. He talks about uh, why? Aren't we suffering now? Isn't the economy so difficult? Well, Ghanaians are only saying Can't the 82%. I'm saying that, mm. haven't they, the, the rating agencies, haven't they downgraded this economy to a junk status? 
So, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? This uh, E. Levitin. We were told by senior members of this party, Kojo Pankunoma is one, John Boyd is one, that Dr. Baumia was neck deep in the formulation of the E. Levy policy. I think Kujo Ponkuma said that the, the vice president did not favor taxing no, no, no. young people. Wait. I was advising. Check it, check it. Advised no. it. No, no, check it, check it. They had a meeting. Check it. He, 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 he did what? At the meeting, the economic management. Uh, he did not do what? That they shouldn't tax the poor, people in poor brackets. And he then said also that the home. vice president was part of the team. Yeah, the decision that, making. That, 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 brought about, yes. that brought about E. Levy. But he said Since that at the meeting. Are the people of Ghana saying they want the whole E. Levy to go or they want what to go? I, what are you choosing and picking within the E. Levy? What is the people of Ghana telling you? What are they telling you? They don't like it. They don't like it. So stop doing this pick and choose that he didn't agree to something he did. No, I'm quoting that, that is not the matter. Let's go according to the uh, Af Afro barometer. They didn't say that 80% of Ghanaians picked that they want the, uh, the, the levy to be this or to be that or to be uh, 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 careful in this way. They said they don't want the E levy. And I'm saying that Bob Rian crafted the E level with his economic management team. How can the same person no, turn no, around no, no, and do a 360 degrees and say, I will cancel it? You are saying that because he was head of economic management, he cannot say I that. It's not because of that. He took part. Because he took part. Say that. Say that. No, say that. So my point is that Ghanaians cannot believe such a person and will not believe such a person. If you don't want mosquitoes, when you see it in my house, kill it. If you don't want mosquitoes. You see it in my house, kill it. Don't be killing mosquitoes alone in your house. Your issue is that you don't want mosquitoes. <laughs> okay. I listen to me. So whoever is see mosquitoes, kill them. Baumian said he didn't like e levy But when the e levy was being crafted, he took part in it. Are you listening? So how can the same person now turn around and say that I would ensure that I... I abolish e -Live, and you believe him. So, this government, and I am not the one speaking, this government, the people of this country are saying that they want to see the back of this government. And they can't wait for 7th December to see the back of this government. This is not a government that can take people out of this economic quagma. They have no ideas, and it is full stop. Roland, so um, are we addressing E Levy? Yeah, I'm told that we have uh, an emergency, so okay. we, we want to. Cash out. Well, so we, it was not an emergency, sorry, I apologize for that. And uh, we just had to go for a break. And so we're back from the break. And um, yeah. Sakatnaka, you were making a, a Roland, point. thank you. Um, Related to the Afrobarometer and then the right. submissions that have been made. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, just a minute. Let me take a few seconds to do this. On Saturday, tomorrow, we are doing a walk here in Accra. We meet at 6 a.m. at the Obra Sports uh, Circle. Yeah, it's very important I do this. Yeah. Because I then may not get NDC, it. They buy a time on. <laughs> we'll come and buy. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, so um, we are inviting all the Yellow Army faithfuls. Come and let's do this. Let's walk for victory. Now, um, the real issues on the ground. Roland, everything the Afrobarometer um, report says... It's true? It's true. And it's only um, a documentation of the effects of bad governance. Everything in there, number of people saying, what's the percentage? Is it 70? 80. 80. Saying the country is headed in the wrong direction. 82. 82 percent it's uh, it's only an affirmation a documentation of what is happening of the real issues on the ground now um everybody is suffering everybody i i was I, I, earlier on i opened how much electricity i bought for october and it's it's marvelous someone you who was somebody paying or pers myself pers personally i was paying 200 cities every month for light when all these months from from january to you know oh just this year matter i'm telling you just 
So Roland, January, Frafo can tell her. I was paying 200 every month. You know, because of the app, there are records. But just last month, October, it shot up to 540 cities. Are you sure you are telling the truth? L look at it. That's the app. This is for October. You know, everything you buy, everything. 540? Every yes, there are records. Wow. That's 300. I'm telling you, 340 cities extra. So, so the, the struggle is real. The hardship is there. Now, you ask MPP for solutions. And they are like free SHS. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you have to respect our sensibilities as Ghanaians. You have to cut us some slack. You have to make Ghanaians feel like we've handed all over our, we've handed our powers all to you to, to, to change things, to fix things. You ask them to find us some solutions out of the economic mess. We agree there's been Russian Ukraine war and all that COVID. These were catalysts, you know, they helped to fast track the crash of the economy that was going to happen anyway because of our insistence on this Gadgetsburg economy we are importing everything we are spending reckless in fact the IMF boss said something last year when they approved our bailout of three billion they're like Ghana's fiscal policy characterized by overspending and a structurally weak domestic revenue mobilization overspending and then structurally with domestic mobilization that is one major reason why our fiscal policy struggles now you ask the mpp it looks like the free shs seems to be the only panacea and that is a propaganda to call glittering generalities they take something good and blow it out of proportion create an illusion in the minds of people that, hey, there's free SHS, so you don't have to talk about your struggles. No, that's disingenuous. What are the real struggles? What has... And do you think it syncs with the, the outcome of the Afrobarometer? Roland, the real struggle is that our income levels do not match with, you know, the expenses we have to, the cost of living. This is, this is rudimentary. Every Ghanaian, every business person knows this for a fact. Now, I want to focus on solutions, solutions. They talk about free SHS, and I wonder, what was Alaji Baumia, their option to solve their problems? What was his specific contribution to free SHS? What has free SHS got to do with the current plight of the Ghanaian? Indeed, you can say it's bridged the inequality gap and all that. After school, are they getting jobs? What does the Afrobarometer a report say what is the unemployment rate now so clearly you realize they are very clueless they have no way of solving the issue and their only way of solving the issue is to pitch Ghanaians you know they are whatever they are doing are against what the NDC did well they have Which, a manifesto have you read the manifesto I've gone through that now what they do is they only project okay we have done more than the NDC people are struggling People cannot pay bills. They are telling them you've done more than the NP NDC. If the NDC was that better, would we be voting them out with an overwhelming over 1 million votes in 2016? The same John Mahama who took us to IMF without COVID Ukraine war. You are, you are now saying you did better than him, so we should vote for you again. No, when you have also taken us to an IMF regulation as we speak. Under John Mahama, we saw a freeze on public sector recruitment so clearly the two parties the mpp and ndc they've proved their way of ruling this country it's not progressive enough it's it's not are you an anybody you are uh, an offshoot of the mpp that you you criticize and alan chairman saying is on that now look, like, I'm, that's I'm why not, at the end of I'm the day i'm not no please, you're, you're, you're if i may your time, let, your time let, is me, up. let me you use it up. to do adverts and then least, your time is at least let me now, um, lawyer jantua What's your considered view about the outcome of this? Does it match with the realities in terms of the human index of the ordinary Ghanaian? When the MPP came in, before they came in, they said the government in power was incompetent. The government of power in power didn't handle this country well. The finances of this country, there's nothing there. So vote for us. 
operative word. There are no, there's no money in the coffers. So Ghanaian said, we vote for you. Yet it's the council as a yes, committee. Yes, we vote for you. How come eight years after you've been voted for, there's still no money in the coffers? You hmm. came and said to us that the other government, they didn't do right. We will come and do right and make Ghanaians happy. Make Ghanaians, you know, live well. There's no money in the coffers. Why? Number two, what is the debt level of the country today? When the MPP came in, what was the debt level? What is the debt level today? Hmm. That debt level reflects into the pockets of Ghanaians. Because 122. 122. 769 billion. And counting. And so, you had quite a lot of money to handle this country's infrastructure and finances well. What happened? What went wrong? Mm. Number three. Free SHS. Hmm? Free SHS. What is the end result of free SHS? Is it linked into when students finish tertiary, finish university, is it linked into a job? Mm. What is the trajectory? What is the plan? What is the value chain in terms but, of free SHS? Ghanaians say they love the free wait, SHS. Wait, 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 wait. That's the reality. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not, I'm not, look, I'm not castigating free SHSO. Ah, okay. I'm looking at what is the trajectory? Because definitely free SHS will increase enrollment. Mm. When it increases enrollment, it's going to increase enrollment down the value chain. And then chain. take care of those who cannot pay. Exactly. It, 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 will, it will increase environment, uh, 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 um, uh, enrollment through the, the, the value chain. So you get more students going to university. You get more students going to all the different uh, 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 institutions. After that, what happens? Is there employment at the end of the day? And that is what we are experiencing today, where a lot of young people have finished university and there are no jobs to mm. go to. Mm. Isn't that what it should be? Have they been able to achieve it as a party? Look, and, and <laughs> this government going to IMF has made Ghanaians much, much, much more poorer. And one of the elements that this government is running away from, Ishak and his people are running away from, is the fact of personal interest. I don't understand. What do you mean you don't understand? <laughs> what do you mean you don't understand? <laughs> Finance minister. Eh? Was his company not earning from the loans we were taking? Yeah. Is that not personal interest? Is that not conflict of interest? And when we said there was conflict of interest, what did they say to us? It can't be. It can't be. Look, I'm not sure whether the Afrobarometer questioned the personal interest issue. They didn't. I hope they did. How many Ghanaians feel that this government has rather looked more to themselves than the country? How many? A, a lot of Ghanaians will tell you. The personal interest is killing this country. And it is more, 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 more uh, 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 seen in this particular but, government. But that would be perception. It cannot... Eh. It's I quoted you one. Is it true? What I said, is it true or false? What I said about Kenofuata, is it true or false? 58 million in a big hole. Is there no personal interest in there? Is there no personal interest in there? Yes. Have they been able... To come to us, has Baumia been able to tell us about that 58 mi uh, million that they've sunk there? Has he been able to say anything about it? No, he's quiet. And I do agree. He feels if he tries to attack the economy, he would have nothing good to say about it. All right. Mm -hmm. You have two minutes yes. to wrap up on this. Uh, thank you very much. Just two I minutes. Think, okay. Yes. I think whether we are moving toward the right direction, I've already explained in the context. Another I don't know when this Afrobarometer report was done, 
if it was also done covering the period that we are having this parliamentary crisis created by this lawless speaker i i think it further explain why we're having this problem I you, it's a manufacturing oh, well, crisis insult, oh. no no but it, it's okay to say lawless speaker if it's lawless the supreme court has made clear order under article 2 he said he will not obey it he is manufacturing crisis so he's a lawless speaker but having said that as i said the economy is beginning to pick up we know Ghanaians love the free exchange. It's for this reason that when we come, we are going to further strengthen it. And with the NDC saying they will review it, and we know their vocabulary, their review means cancellation. So if Ghanaians really want it, they have to maintain the MPP there. Mr. Janjo asked a right question, that where would these products be going in their way forward? This is for the reason we have this manifesto. Manifesto for both solutions for jobs and business. The vice president has Yen promised three percent of GDP is going to be moved to the private sector. No country, if you see the advanced country employee citizen, it's not the public sector. You can only employ more people if you expand the private sector. It's for this reason that three percent of it is going to be allocated to the private sector. And more so, we are going to restructure the taxation systems, flat rate tax, and to capture more people into the tax revenue. This well, is the strategy for the uh, way forward. Two minutes. Wrap up on this. Um, what does it mean as we go into the election? Two minutes. Well, can you trust Baumia and Napo? And let me say they are the most weakest pair of presidential tickets that... MPP has ever presented. It's the voters who determine that. They are the most <laughs> weakest, the two of them. One speaks carelessly, the other one lies. One, you, 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 cannot, you, can, you can't present them to the outside world as people representing Ghana. Look, you remember, Baumian blamed the GRA. There was a time Baumian blamed GRA for high taxes in this country. Little did we know that Baumian and this government were setting the targets for GRA. The GRA workers came out to expose Baunya. The, the, the union, you remember? The union. So these people, fuel, fuel prices, fuel prices. Eh? As we speak, can you compare fuel prices as at the NDC time to now? Look, the ordinary Ghanaian knows that this government is the most insensitive government Ghana has ever had. And so when you listen to people talk and you are on the streets and their complaints, you remember there was an old man who was on, on, uh, on, on, on the uh, video saying that, because I think they interviewed him, when you meet Akufado, what will you tell him? That I will slap him, you remember? There was an old man saying that. People can say... Those so the I am saying that people are so annoying, pent up anger against this government, and they are just waiting for 7 December. He was talking about uh, their performance uh, before COVID. That performance was as a result of the NDC's IMF conditionalities. After they left the IMF conditionalities, it started coming down. Two of us. IMF was going to end in 2018. They extended it to 2019. Immediately they left the IMF conditionalities. And we were out of the IMF uh, uh, program. The, the, the economy started plummeting. It's a fact. So they should stop using the early days. As if the early days was their handiwork. The early days was the NDC handiwork. So these people don't know anything. Just a minute. Sorry, I'm not supposed to do, give you two minutes. Only oh, a minute. One minute. Yes, please. Okay. So what happens is we don't need E-Levy. Alan has started some transformational programs. He has to be president to come and continue if we will fix things. When he One was a is, member of the MPP and the government. <laughs> well, of course, but then, like I said last the week, that you his policies were all encompassing. They, they were beyond partisan consideration. So, for example, if you look at the African Trade Forum report for 2012, then Alan was not even in government. What happened was they they created a pathway for the creation of the intercontinental free trade area. One of their recommendations was that after the after is created, the intercontinental free trade area market is created, 
The next is to boost local production. And that's why Alan has identified 10 anchor, strategic anchor industries. He started it. He's brought the automobile industry. Now we assemble cars in Ghana. Next is to <coughs> manufacture the components, the parts for um, the assembly. You're rushing me, man. <laughs> and then the next is to ensure some fiscal discipline. You know, expenditure management and control systems. Government is spending so much out of their budget and all that, and that is what is causing some of these struggles. That's why they must tax people instead of helping businesses to grow. Let me tell you how Alan helped businesses to grow. We have to structure business. We talk about um, widening the tax gap, the, ta the tax net. This is how Alan sought to do. He created BRCs, business resource centers, that had the responsibility to register and help all businesses you know become officially recognized and then they can move from indirect taxes into direct taxes please a minute wrap up for me you know e levy huh? was theft of the people's money e levy was theft of the people's money very mm. illegal tax mm. that i have my savings and government wants to put their hands in it and steal it from me Definitely. It shouldn't have even started. And what did they promise us about e levy It's going to sort every all the problems. Did Roads, it? Schools. Did it? Did it? Wasn't that deception? Wasn't that deception? And they, they are telling us now that, oh, it is something we, 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 we are against. We didn't want it. Were you not part and parcel of the decision that was made? How do you think this will, will inf influence the elections? Because it looks like how Ghanaians feel. Well, let's see. It's Ghanaians who vote. Okay. We are putting what we feel the status quo is. It's up to Ghanaians on 7th June to decide, or 7th December, to decide who they want to rule. It could be that they would vote for Baumia. Mm -hmm. It could be they would vote for Chemati. It could be they would vote for what? It could be they would even vote for my own uh, Nana Frankuma. Okay. But on the day is when we will see. It's not All for right. me. Is it not the NDC that first said it will abolish e uh, last year? At Kempiski Hotel. All right. Then so they saw let me it just, and also copied it. Let me just uh, try and tell you that we have cash out goes with the short code star 439 hash. We'll be doing the draws while we're ready for the draw. This one is coming from um, landlord Borga D line. Uh, says for almost eight years, all the government's appointed officials, all they talk about is free SHS, etc. I'm not too sure. They, they have a, a number of uh, also policies. I think yesterday there was a, a, a commissioning of uh, one of the hospitals at MIM. I, the vice president did that. Which one? Which one? The Mim uh, Polyclinic. Uh -huh. It's been commissioned by the vice president. But, now, but can we do the draw? It's not one of the agenda one one. It is. It's right. not. All right. It's not. It's not. So the first winner taking home two thousand Ghana cities. So we have various categories. Charlie, star four three nine hash two zero two four three eight two. Three, and that's the number. So that's the first draw. Are we doing a second one or we're going for a break? All right, so thank you, gentlemen. All, the, all those who sent me messages.